Howdy everyone, the time is 4.53 p.m. and it is February 18th. Welcome to another update from Great Lakes Weather. Hopefully everyone is doing well today. I will say we've got quite a forecast in place for an ice storm across Michigan and a snowstorm, winter storm. Potential appears very good for that area. It looks like Indiana and Ohio are going to miss out on this. It's going to be mainly rain for them, but there's a surprising amount of model consistency for this event that is going to be moving through on Wednesday night into Thursday come next week. So that's what we're looking at in this video. We're looking at the setup for freezing rain and where that freezing rain band could potentially set up per the current models. Again, that is very likely going to change. I do think though we're seeing enough consistency where we can say, okay, this is what the general track could look like for this storm. So here we have the Weather Prediction Center's website. You can see all of the um, places that could be impacted by this potential winter storm based on what the National Weather Service is projecting. You do see a very heavy band of snow. Um, some places, some people are even saying, some net weather stations are saying, um, could even see up to two feet of snow. Again, that's a rough measurement because we're still waiting on what could possibly occur. Um, given the changes in models that'll be coming, but you do have the threat for heavy snow out west And then here you notice that the threat for a lot of snow does go down a little bit But it still does look like there could be some major snow totals up in parts of the northern lower peninsula Maybe even parts of the southern upper peninsula could be included in that as well And then you notice there's not much potential for snow here That's because I think the major threat and what um, some of the models are projecting it to be is freezing rain. The main threat in this area is freezing rain and a lot of freezing rain. Some more freezing rain than we've probably seen in the past um, couple of years is currently being projected by some models in this potential setup. So I'm going to show you what the models are saying and how this could potentially unfold according to the models. Again, keep in mind, they will change coming up to the actual event, but I do want to focus on that during this particular video. So here we have the GFS model. GFS model does tend to show um, kind of a generalized track, initial track, and might change a little bit later, but here's what we're looking at. You may notice um, this is getting into Wednesday morning, early Wednesday morning. You do see, oh, there's a little bit of snow forming into parts of Michigan. You do see kind of a streamline of snow going all the way across from Michigan, all the way out towards South Dakota and those areas. And then you notice on the bottom side, there's rain. And you kind of see, notice this 540 line here, this 546 line. You see that um, that spot right in between those two warm and cold air masses. That's what, where I think um, freezing rain could potentially set up in that general area. You notice that this area does tend to move northward. Um, as we go into Wednesday afternoon, the warm air, and then it looks like there could still be some cooler air at the surface with this setup and you do notice the freezing rain does extend down into parts of northern Ohio connected to this deepening low across parts of Colorado it looks like just a chain of precipitation and the low low pressure kind of setting up associated with this you do notice low pressure system here and it does show that that freezing rain band will likely lift a little bit to the north later on into Thursday morning but still the ice impacts will still be pretty decent from this setup it, temperatures will still be close enough to freezing point that will enable that ice to kind of withstand the um, warmer temperatures for a bit but you do notice it does move out of that area rather quickly you do have a lot of sleet and ice across parts of central and then snow in across parts of northern Michigan and look how much look those at the span of this snowstorm spanning all the way from the eastern coast back into the plains and it looks like there could even be some blizzard potential back here given the tightening isobars within this region so it is going to be a fairly decent setup something to definitely watch given the fact that especially we're seeing quite a bit of model consistency with this event coming up on February 23rd and then may even last into Friday given the lake effect snow potential that will occur on the back side of this so a lot of things to watch with this low that's going to be moving through. This is the one low we're going to be focused on it, focusing on during this entire video. But let's zoom in onto the regional graphic for the Midwest so we can get an idea of what the GFS is saying, where they're saying this could land. So we're going to go to the time of the event that starts Wednesday morning. Do you see things start off as some light snow across parts of southern Michigan? And 
northern parts of the lower peninsula of Michigan, and then you see that rainfall across parts of southern Indiana, I think you guys are going to miss out on a lot of the winter activity. It's really going to focus across the lower peninsula of Michigan, according to what the models are saying at the current time. So um, progressing it forward, you do see, okay, you do see this um, Gulf moisture start to lift into the parts of um, Illinois and parts of Michigan. This is closer to nightfall. You notice in the afternoon that that band is kind of lifted off to the north. I do believe that has to do a lot with the fact that we're, we're kind of in the heat of the day, so to speak, at the, that current moment. But as we get into nightfall, you can notice that as, it, as the sun begins to set, temperatures begin to cool down. We do have that freezing rain set up across parts of southern Michigan and in parts of northern Indiana, northern Ohio. And it does look relatively heavy, according to what some of these models are saying. And look at this. It's a very good setup for some freezing rain. You have um, a very quickly warming air mass just above the, um, just above, like just one kilometer off the ground at the 850 millibar level. And then at the surface, you have freezing temperatures of 32 degrees. That quick warming followed by that sharp cool will make those raindrops um, start to freeze a little bit. And that freezing rain potential can possibly come into place. That sharp cool down will enable that to possibly take place. Now, one thing to notice is that the um, it looks like the dendritic growth zone remains relatively above freezing, but it remains closer close to freezing point as well. So I think that could have some potential impacts on this setup. But again, it does show that that freezing temperatures at the surface will create a quick freeze of anything that accumulates on the surface, especially since with the cooler temperatures that we've had over the past couple of days. So you do have that in place. And it does show that that line tends to lift a little bit farther to the north as we get into early Thursday morning as that warmer air mass begins to surge into the Great Lakes region. Our, and we have that um, freezing freezing rain potential still kind of sitting along a line extending from Van Buren County all the way out towards Detroit. You can kind of see the freezing rain band still staying in place. That heavy rain looks like could appear to be possible with this as well. And then at as that warm air mass lifts to the north, you have freezing rain going up even into parts of Grand Rapids areas to the north. And then that heavy snow begins to take shape over Wisconsin into parts of the Upper Peninsula. Moving out, that low pressure system moves across the area, finally gets across, and then that lake effects, brief, brief burst of lake effects snow on the backside could take place with that cooler air that could move in along behind this. Not really much cooler air, but it still will be a little bit cooler than what we would see during that day when the warm air mass lifts to the north. But Thursday the 23rd is the day to watch this next week. Very, very concerning event kind of showing itself here upon this particular model run. Now I want to show you the potential. I want to do a freeze frame on the time of the most intense freezing rain, which I believe would be focused around this time frame, Wednesday afternoon around, I'd say, 5 p.m., so or 4 p.m. So let's go to that particular time frame. That will be hour 105 on this graphic. There you go. Now let's look at the dynamics for this event, the winter weather that could potentially occur with this. Freezing rain accumulations over that particular time period do show some rather decent amounts of freezing rain accumulation. Again, take this carefully because um, the blend of models will kind of downgrade this ice accumulation just a little bit, but you do see ice accumulations could quickly get to about a tenth of an inch across some parts of southern lower Michigan as early as Wednesday afternoon. So, and then as we go forward into this set setup, you do see that quite a bit of icing could occur with this event, but we got to keep in mind that this is just one model. A few models are saying other different things. Some models are more intense than this. Some models are even less intense than this. So I really think it's going to be a very delicate situation in forecasting ice accumulations but still, going back to that specific hour where it's forming, we do have that setup in place for snow or for freezing rain. Okay, Best guess precip type from this sounding involves freezing rain, a freezing rain setup. You've got a lot of vertical lift in the atmosphere, storm relativity, and um, you've got eastern winds at the surface, which cool things down really quickly because those eastern winds are coming um, from a cooler air from cooler air mass off to the east and then you also have southwesterly winds up aloft that are allowing that warming trend to kind of take place um, a higher in the upper levels so very 
interesting setup we will have to watch very carefully as we go into it. I want to compare it to the euro model because the euro is showing the ice accumulation potential even farther to the south. So let's look at that real quick. Going into the time of the event, which is, again, Wednesday. So here's that initial snow band that's going to be moving through parts of Minnesota. And then you do see some, a few even some thunderstorms popping up across parts of Ohio Wednesday morning. Again, it does look like it's going to be a little too cold for those to be um, anything significant with the, in regards to in regards to thunderstorms. But you do have those popping up. That Gulf moisture starting to come in. Look how much farther this model drops the ice accumulations to the south. It drops it um, down closer to even much of northern Indiana included in this as well and m pretty much all of lower Michigan is under the ice threat according to the Euro model and that's also st the Euro model is also showing that that ice accumulation potential even stays even farther to the south later on so you have a slight change in the in the two models here not really too significant of a change but slight enough to say okay it's gonna be hard to project who exactly is gonna get the most ice in this general area I want to do a freeze frame on this model graphic as well so we're gonna to go to hour 108 where the heaviest freezing rain is beginning to fall you get a sounding of this setup across parts of southern lower Michigan and again very similar setup here. You have your dendritic growth zone, 17,000 to 20,000 feet up in the air, and then you have that really warm air just above the one kilometer above the surface, and then temperatures even colder than what's shown by the GFS, temperatures around 30 degrees. So as that rain falls, and that's, as, as that very cold rain falls, it hits the ground, it's going to quickly freeze up and cause a lot of icing. Best guess precip type here, once again, being freezing rain. And you still have all that vertical lift enabling um, this this storm to, these ice storms really kind of take off and or these little embedded heavier clusters of rainfall to kind of dump a bit more rain so very concerning setup for this event this is something you're going to want to watch carefully because this could have some pretty serious impacts not just to the roads but also to even some infrastructure Can, wouldn't be surprised if these models hold together we could see power outages with this ice storm setup, you're going to want to have a plan in place if these models tend to stay consistent with the current setup. It's not going to be a fun thing to deal with. It's not going to be something you want to be driving out in on Thursday and maybe even into Friday. I do think Thursday is really going to be the day because temperatures will warm up into the 40s probably as we get later on Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening because um, you'll have that warm air mass in place. Then Friday, it'll cool down again with maybe some lake effect snow on the back side. I want to compare the models now for ice again ECMWF definitely is on the higher end very high end of ice accumulation potential and again these are very exaggerate these could be very exaggerated ice accumulations of up to an inch I really think that's a over exaggeration for this um, I I would be very surprised if we got that much ice um, in any ice storm that we would have. So this is definitely just showing kind of a generalized focus of where the ice could be. Keep in mind, five days out, we don't want to make an accumulation total projection, and I'm not going to. I'm just going to show you what the models are saying in regards to the location of ice accumulation, and it really focuses areas north of Fort Wayne, Indiana, nor and just west northwest of Toledo, Ohio, could see some significant icing, and then areas south of, I'd say, Big Rapids, um, and those areas will have to watch for significant icing. And then areas even out west could see some icing. Chicago, um, southern Wisconsin, and then parts of Iowa might be included in that icing potential as well. GDPS, again, showing that focus point still in a similar location. The model consistency this far out is very impressive, which is why it's something to be concerned about for a significant icing event across parts of Michigan. But you do have that ice potential still south of Big Rapids, um, a little bit farther south than what is in Ohio than what is um, projected by the Euro model. Northwest, you do have that icing potential across parts of, of northwest of Toledo and then across that same general area in southern Michigan. GFS model, now again, showing that northern mode. Um, and it actually does show a bit more freezing rain farther to the south, but I'd still see that general area of freezing rain south of Big Rapids, north of Fort Wayne. So nothing 
nothing really changing here. Now the blend of models, if we blend all the models together, this is the National Weather Service's blend of models. So it really downgrades that ice accumulation totals, okay? Which is good news, all right? So you do have um, a lower amount of icing, but still enough icing to cause some decent travel impacts. Um, and again, some places in there localized could probably have a bit more icing than was being shown. I do think this will probably be the better estimate than what these models are saying. But again, given the fact that these models are projecting higher end ice accumulations is cause for concern that you'll have to watch out for localized areas of more heavy freezing rain and more heavy ice accumulations as a result. So that is really what these models are saying as of the current moment. Again, we're going to continue to provide consistent updates on this very this rather concerning ice storm setup. So make sure to subscribe and stay updated. Not going to be a fun scenario if um, whatever any of these models are saying unfolds. So definitely want to pay attention to your local weather forecast offices and keep in mind that um, your plan in case you slide off the road in terms in when it comes to ice situations. Definitely going to be a slippery situation. So please stay tuned for future updates. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all at the next opportunity.